everyone, it's Mary. Today I'll talk about the books that I read in the month of September. I'm trying to catch up. Um, I think I'm getting there, but I don't want to say it too loudly. So we'll see, we'll see how this goes. Anyway, um, I'll briefly talk firstly about a DNF um, that happened, uh, which was our book club pick for August, I want to say. Maybe it was August and September. And um, anyway, it was, um, oh, the book club that I'm referring to is um, a book club on uh, Voxer called uh, The Roaring Twenties. And it's hosted by um, Yami over at A Skeptical Reader, which who um, um, recently got back on YouTube. So I'm gonna link to her channel down below. Um, she's great. And um, this book is The Wizard of the Crow by Nguji Wan Tiongo and it's a, it's a, it's a big book um, and it's also a fantasy. I was very interested in this one, the author is Kenyan and it just appealed to me, um, especially being a fantasy because I, I usually, I, I really used to love fantasy but it's been a while since I dived into one of them so I was very eager to get to this one. Unfortunately I gave up on this one on page 76 which it's not a lot considering the, the length of the book, but I just felt like it wasn't really going anywhere. I didn't mind the writing style, it was very easy to go through, um, but I felt like it didn't accomplish anything up uh, until this point, uh, not plot-wise, not character development-wise or world-building-wise. Um, I just couldn't retain any sort of information and I know that usually in fantasies, in the, especially the first you know, uh, the first um, chapters are all about setting um, the the scene and the tone and everything, but I just couldn't feel anything compelling enough for me to keep on reading. Um, and yeah, I also had troubles with the setting, because at first I thought it sounded and it felt very biblical and very ancient, and then they talk, they're talking about like some, some sort of TV screen and suits that they're wearing, and I'm like, I was thrown off completely um, from the first impression and I have to say that I'm not the best with um, especially landscape descriptions and, and just settings in general but I, when I come across a book that actually is able to give me that vision I'm like okay so there are books that I can read and imagine and picture the surroundings um, and sometimes I just can't um, and I felt like it was it was, you know, uh, my problem, but I, I, I think it's both, you know, it's both my problem and, and the book's problem that, uh, that can convey this kind of, of, of scenery. So yeah, this one was not for me and I, and I gave it up. Next up I have, again, I've been reading um, predominantly um, the uh, Kimi Wa Petto series, manga series. Um, Kimi Wa Petto or You're My Pet or Tramps Like Us. I will just put pic a picture here. I read volumes uh, two, three, four, five, and six, I think. I, I, must, I must have wrote it somewhere. Um, yes, up until volume six. They are what they are. I talked about this series in my last video, but briefly, it's uh, the story of this uh, young woman. She's in her 30s, I think she's 30, actually. In the manga, she's 28. Um, yeah, she's uh, a young woman that has like a brilliant career, but she gets demoted at work for standing up against her boss who was harassing her. And she's also, she gets dumped by her boyfriend, uh, who whom she thought she was going to marry, so she's just not having a good week. And when she comes back to her apartment, she finds in a, in a cardboard box a boy, a 19-year-old boy that, um, or is he, I think he's 20, anyway, a younger boy um, who is all bitten up and just not in a good shape, and she brings him home and helps him, gives him food, lets him stay for, for the night, um, and then she asks him to leave and just go on with his life, but he says that he has nowhere to go, and please can he, uh, can she keep him? And she, like, sort of like a joke, she says, you can, you can stay here as my pet, and he agrees, and that's how the relationship, this sort of yet weird relationship starts. It could be wrong in a lot of ways, 
but it also cannot. I mean, it's not. Let's say that the manga has its problems. Um, I'm reading it because I really like the story. And as I said, I first consumed this sort of story with the 2017 TV show, which I adore and still stand by it. So I would redirect, if, if it sounds like it's interesting to you, I would redirect you um, to the TV show because it was brilliant. Not the 2003 version, because that's, it has like, the same, sort of the same problems as the manga has, but the 2017, they did a great job with the story. Um, but I am enjoying the manga, of course. It has, as I said, a lot of problems. Anyway, that's it for the manga. Moving on, um, I read, um, I finished, because I've been reading this book, I think, for months now. I think even before summer I started this book. Um, and it is The Collected Schizophrenias by Esme Wang. Um, this is a collection of essays on schizophrenia and the author was diagnosed with uh, schizoaffective disorder and she talks about her experience um, coping with this um, uh, with this condition and it was very eye-opening. Schizophrenia is, is stigmatized both you know in, in, in society but also in media and she talks about you know both of these um, issues and she talks to the general public but also to whom might be experiencing something similar to her and um, it was extremely informative and uh, and I really enjoyed it but um, ultimately I thought I was go going to enjoy this even more I had very high expectations based on the reviews that I had came across um, on this book and I just was expecting something more um, maybe maybe it was just that it had to be longer or more personal which is weird to say because it is personal she's talking about her experience but I felt a bit detached from from it and um, but I will I would definitely recommend this one anyway because as I said I really enjoyed it and it was very informative um, and interesting um, but yeah, I couldn't quite get there, you know, as as to be a, a five star read for me. So this one. And then um, to, because it wouldn't be my channel if there wasn't a book about parenting or something related to children. So I will just briefly, really briefly, I promise, talk about Oh Crap Potty Training by Jamie Gowacki. Um, this book does exactly what it says. It's it did the job. So I enjoyed it. I will talk about it, of course. I will at some point make a video and that's the, uh, I don't know how many times I said this, but a, a video about books about parenting, uh, just what I recommend and I will like, dive into more topics parenting related. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this one, it did the job. I, I heard like people didn't like this book because they didn't like the tone, which was a bit preachy, a bit, um, ironic. I didn't mind it at all. I wouldn't necessarily, I don't agree with everything she says because she sort of puts her opinion on, on more things than just potty training, just tossed here and there. But I didn't, I didn't, I didn't mind it at all and I feel like for the, you know, this book is meant to help you potty train your child, not to, you know, raise him or, or anything. So it did the job. I liked it and I recommend it if you're trying or you plan on potty training your child, definitely recommend this one. So I feel like this was very brief, so I'll add what I'm currently reading because I thought it would be interesting. Um, I, had, I have already read a couple of books um, for this month, so hopefully I'll have, you know, something to talk about in my wrap-up. Um, but I'm reading, again, uh, parenting related, I'm reading a book called Sorry, because I have the Italian translation. Mm. How to Talk So Kids Will Listen and Listen So Kids Will Talk by Adele Faber and Elaine, Elaine Maslisch. Um, I, yes, I have the Italian translation. It's interesting, it's quick to read. I feel like it, it borrows from a lot of different books that I already read, such as the PET. Um, thing by, by, oh, I don't remember the name, 
I'll put this, I'll put it here. Um, but yeah, I think it borrows from, from a, a lot of, of different books. But I'm enjoying and it doesn't have the, the same sort of manual approach to, to the whole thing, which turns off a lot of people, understandably. So I'm liking this one. And then, um, what else, what else? I'm reading, ah, I'm reading another Sarah Waters, which I'm very happy about, because I've only read The Little Stranger and I absolutely loved it. Um, well, it was, I think, a couple of years ago now, even three. It was a long time ago and I, I said, okay, I need to read like a Sarah Waters a, a year at least, because it's just, she's so good at setting the, the mood and just creating an atmosphere, especially in this, you know, period. It's starting to get cold and outside it's gloomy and it's raining and it's just perfect for autumn. And, um, and she is one of those authors that actually um, can convey the, the setting so very well. I still remember the, the mansion in, in The Little Stranger, like as if I walked in there and it's amazing. So I'm, I'm reading uh, Fingersmith. And I am um, there. <laughs> I am like 30% in, and I'm absolutely enjoying it. So, so good. Uh, I love how she writes. And actually, sometimes I mix it up with, um, with I think it's similar in tone. And I'm not the first person to say it. I'm sure to um, to Daphne du Maurier a little bit. Um, and but like, yeah, I'm really enjoying this one. And um, I won't really talk about what it's what this book is about it's just set in London in the in the 1800s I'm really really enjoying this one and um, then I plan to read the the, the volume 9 because that's where I'm at uh, of Kimi Wapetto which I, I feel like it's no interest to anyone and another book that I plan to read soon like by the end of the month, and I hope I can manage it because it's very short. It's another book club book um, that we picked for, yeah, for October. And it is um, I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shraya. And it's a, as I said, it's a very tiny non-fiction book about her um, uh, as a tran trans artist and how toxic masculinity is um, damaging um, to both men and women um, and yeah it sounds like really interesting and and as uh, I feel like the, the style of it is um, it flows very nicely I mean that's my impression of it but I didn't read it yet so I'll let you know and and that was it for this video I hope you enjoyed and I hope it wasn't too long in the end because I feel like I went quickly like the first um, minutes and then I don't know I don't know but um, I hope you're doing well and I'll see you in my next video bye bye